Good morning, everyone. It is Good Friday this morning. Um, a strange day because we call it Good Friday, considering what happened to Jesus. But we're going to read about that this morning as we read the rest of John chapter 19 together. Let's read it now. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to a place called Palace of the Skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin and Greek so that many people could read it. Then the leading priests objected and said to Pilate, change it from the King of the Jews to he said, I am the King of the Jews. Pilate said, no. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from bottom to top. So they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture saying, they divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his, this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, his disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to, fill, to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath. And a very special Sabbath because it was Passover week. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering that their legs be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so you may also continue to believe. These things happen to fulfill happened in fulfillment of the scripture that says not one of his bones will be broken and they will look on the one pl- on the one that they pierced afterwards joseph of arimathea who had been a secret disciple of jesus because he feared the jewish leaders asked pilate for permission to take down jesus body when pilate gave permission joseph came and took the body away with him came nicodemus the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made of myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, he wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in a long sheet of linen cloth. The place of the crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they led Jesus there. Amen. It's a hard story to listen to when you hear about Jesus being crucified. It was such a cruel way to die. The Bible calls anyone hung on a tree cursed. But to be crucified was a slow and long process. As you hung from your hands, you would slowly suffocate. So you would push up with your feet to try and ease your breathing. And then when your feet got too sore or the nails were ripping into your feet, then you would hang again from your hands or your wrists until you could bear it no longer. And you went through this pattern of pushing up and and hanging down again and pushing up and hanging down, which was why soldiers at times would break people's legs to hasten or to speed up the death so they couldn't push up. And then you would slowly suffocate. They would give you sour wine, um, sometimes mixed with other things as well, as a type of um, painkiller. 
again to prolong your death. The Romans were very good at finding new and hideous ways of killing people. They were, they were well renowned for it. And Jesus was killed by one of these methods. He was crucified. But they didn't take his life. Jesus gave it up. There's a big difference. It's verse 30. It said, um, when Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Don't forget that at any time, Jesus could have stopped what happened to him. At any time, <clears throat> as other places of scripture say, Jesus could have called on an army of the angels to destroy the, the soldiers and everybody else who was there who was crucifying him. And, and for him to, to, to literally bring himself down off that cross to heal his wounds and to be justified and in, in, in not dying and going back to heaven. And, you know, but he didn't do that. Rather, he, sat, he set his will to one side to do the will of his father so that we could be forgiven. You see, it's a bit like um, whenever Jesus, it, 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 it merged with Jesus, whenever Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane. And whenever he's praying, and he says, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. Jesus was always going to do his father's will. And he sets us a really strong example, one which at times for us is impossible to follow. But the example of us setting aside our will to follow God's will. We have choices every day. Choices which... Yes, are very insignificant. Do I go this way or that way? Do I buy this, buy that? Do I say this? Do I not say this? But in all things, we should be seeking what God's will is and asking God to guide us and direct us. Maybe we know at times we are justified in saying something to somebody, but will it achieve anything? Will it bring glory to God or will it simply hurt somebody and drive them further away from God? So, when we have that choice, shouldn't we say or not say the thing that um, is more pleasing to God, the thing which is his will? You know, Jesus set that example for us, the ultimate example of dying on the cross and not coming down. Will we follow God's will today? Let's pray. Father, thank you again for today. A day will be called Good Friday, a day whenever we remember what Jesus did for us. Lord, when we think about that, when whenever we reflect upon everything that he has done for us, Lord, may we be spurred on by doing your will and by serving you so that it brings glory and honour to you and spreads the good news of your kingdom. Father, go with us this day, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Folks, whatever you're doing this day, wherever you find yourself, whatever you're up to, may you truly know God's peace and blessing on this Good Friday. God bless.